Good morning. We're going to make this today. Um, yeah, where do we start? Okay. I got the inspiration. Uh, we have a big show here in Devon at um, in Exeter called the West Point Arena. And it's the West Point Show. Um, and I remember seeing on uh, one of the exhibitors tables, um, because they have like uh, guild members and stuff like that. And I remember seeing a needle book on somebody's desk and I totally admired it. And I said to the lady, oh, love that. Have you got a pattern? And she just went, no, it's just something I made up. So visually, I took a picture of that in my mind. And it was, I guess it was a couple of months before I thought, right, I really need, I kept losing my needles. Um, I got all my speciality needles and stuff like that. And I thought I'd, what I need to do is make a big needle book to put everything in and then I know exactly where it is. OK. And then I remembered that I'd seen this one with the uh, tabs on the side. I like the idea of that. Um, yeah. And that's kind of where it went from there. And I just made it up as I went along, I'll be honest with you. So um, I'll just share this with you now. So. Um, OK, to start with, you need a piece of. Uh, batting, a um, bit of old blanket, a bit of polyester wadding, whatever you've got. Um, this was a scrap that I managed to find, which was perfect size, amazing. Um, I've I've measured it twelve across, eight tall, and that's inches. Um, that is an inch bigger than we actually need it, but it gives you plenty of room for trimming and stuff like that. Um, you know, you make it whatever size you need this is a good size for me i like this size it's a good and i don't lose it basically as well so um let me pop that up there um so the front cover is strip pieced fabric again when i thought I, I really need to get this made the first thing i thought was what color shall i do and then i just that was a huge stumbling block for me so all i did was i got my scrap bin I shut my eyes, I delved in and I pulled out a load of stuff, OK, and I put it on the desk and then I worked it into strips and I've done exactly the same yesterday. Um, and I've got all my strips, as you can probably see here. Now, I have taken the time to press them. I like to I like to have them sort of fairly flat, I'll be honest with you. It just makes the piecing a lot quicker and easier. Um, and yeah, I just prefer to do that. So this is the way I start. Um, you know, you do you really, but this is the way I'm starting. So I folded the fabric in half, the um, batting, just put a finger press crease down the where the spine will be. Now, remember, your spine is going to end up quite wide. So uh, this piece I've got here is. How big are you? About two inches, remembering that you're going to lose a bit either side when you sew on strips but we'll get to that okay so I've got a crease down here yeah you can just see that and then I'm going to lay my first piece down here all right so that technically is going to be my spine so let me get some pins now you just need to pin this first bit um could you do it with fusible I suppose you could um, but anyway, I thought I find this easier and then it is just a case of laying down your strips one by one. Basically, you're not there. You're over there. OK, so I've yeah, I've just dug in and I've got out and nothing matches. And to me, that is the beauty of this book, because because it's so colourful, I never lose it. And it's just a one off. OK, if you want it all matchy matchy, you do you go for it. Um, right. So. Uh, yeah, and now it is just a case. If you've ever done strip piecing, you know exactly what we're doing. We're going to lay them face to face. And then we're going to stitch about a quarter inch seam. OK, you do actually need more than you you think you need. So get a few ready. I'm going to stitch a couple live and then um, I'll go off, come back. Um, because um, I want to show you how to do this bit in case you don't know how. So let me just do this one and then... Um, I shall be with you in a second. Oh, okay. Sheen's talking to me. <laughs>
pin if you want to, it's up to you. I just tend to let the let it go through. Right, so that's the first piece done. So you're just going to fold that over. If you want to get the iron on it, do so. I might do actually, bear with me. The other thing is to do fat bits, thin bits, you know, mix it up. So then you just get your next one, lay it down. You can go wonky if you want to. You could go that way if you want to. It is completely up to you. I just liked the straight strips. So this is going to be a very narrow one. Bear with me. in two seconds okay and you just keep going okay fill this side first so I'll pause you I'll fill this side and then we'll come back and do this side together okay back in a sec well second for you <laughs> right so I've stitched right up and I've overhung the uh, batting, the batting backing. <laughs> Obligatory cat hair, of course. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it, it just, I love it. I think it's great. I think the more eclectic, the better for me. Leave your bits hanging over. We'll trim that up later. Oh, it's very scruffy on the edges. So that's fine. Now, as I said, I do, I quite like this bit where it's got the short bits and then the bit going that way. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, there's no rocket science involved here at all. So it's the same again. I'm going to delete, well, am I? Yeah, because he's not tall enough to go there. So I'm going to stitch like a half one there. I'll do that live, bear with me. Sorry if that's jiggling you. I don't usually sew up here, I've got a sewing table. Well, desk, it's nothing exciting. So do the same again, okay? Just keep going. Like I say, mix up those colours, go for it. I'm missing my thread bunny. get the idea I'm gonna go across I'll pause you for a sec and then I'll come back let's hit the right button okay so so the bottom bit now it's gone a bit wonky donkey that's fine sorry we've got a weird shadow coming in it's the sun's decided to come out typical right okay so we can take that pin out now uh, right okay so all we need to do now is um, just fill in this top bit now, it is slightly different. As I say, you can just do all strip pieces. Completely up to you. I can actually get hold of a piece. So we're going to use that like that. Okay, it needs to cover all the tops. But because we've got a raw edge here, I'm going to fold it over just, I don't know, quarter inch, something like that. And then when that's sewn, we can flop that over and we'll have a nice neat edge here, which we'll stitch down. So let me, I'm going to do this bit live with you. So I'm sorry if it's, um, I just want to, come on, fold. Thank you. Stay. So when I stitch, I'm going to stitch from here right across. Just make sure I've got everything in. Right. Back in a sec. Sorry if you're <laughs> it's 
because I've got the phone on charge, sorry, and it's wiggling the line. Quick press. Okay, so you end up with a neat line here, and we're just going to stitch that down in a moment. Okay, so same again. I'm hoping this bit's long enough, actually. Yeah. Don't forget, we've we've gone over an inch, all right, so we don't have to worry too much about covering everything because we are going to trim from here. All right, so I need to do that there. Let's kind of line that up if possible. Yeah, so I'm just folding back a half, well, as I say, quarter inch, really, and just getting it in line with that blue bit that I did just now. I think I've just sewn that on upside down. <laughs> oh no, good. Doesn't matter. I'd have just left it anyway because it's just, um, um, yeah, just to let you know, I'm using sort of cotton weight fabrics. I mean, you could do it in furnishing fabrics. It'd be a very, very sturdy pin book, um, but that would be obviously up to you. That's your choice. I guess it depends on what fabrics you pull out of your scrap bin. Um, I keep mainly like the thinner cotton ones in that little tub. And then the um, the thicker ones I um, I put in a box, basically, because uh, I like to make my Frankenstein bags out of those. Right, are we lined up? Right, stay. Two seconds. We'll tidy all that up in a minute. Oh, my life is full of strings. <laughs> Bits of thread. I go out and I'm covered in them. That's because I'm terrible and I don't check my appearance. <laughs> Can't be bothered. Okay, so that one there. This is a selvage, so I'm going to actually use the selvage to um, stitch the well you could leave it raggedy if you wanted to you could leave that showing but i think i'll use that as part of the um scene that's the word it's amazing how much fabric you actually need i've had to add a extra piece on this bit i thought i'd got plenty but i didn't so it's a real good scrap buster project you know you can really um dig into your scraps a lot. Just do a little back stitch there just to make sure that that's nice and secure where I'm doing the uh, fold back bit. Okay, well, yeah, I'm going to need more. Another piece of this blue here, so we could. Might look alright. Doesn't matter, does it? Let's just stitch it on, and that will finish that top off then in one shot. I'm going to cut that one because it's a rather long one. That one was pin. If you go slightly wonky here don't worry because you can always trim it with a bit of lace or something you know don't panic this is such a scrappy project it's really good fun and um you know you haven't got to worry about anything really you could patchwork you can you know do loads of shapes if you want to if you don't want to do the strip piecing 
it really is a case of you do whatever you want to do really i found this a good fun and colorful and um you know relatively easy to do so there we are we're all covered all right so i just need to run a line of stitching down here just to secure these ends now you can do a fancy stitch if you want to in fact i think i might um i'm just going to give it a quick press hold on Just get it nice and pressed flat and then it'll um hopefully stitch nicely what should we do oh i've got loads on here um bah, bah, bah. i'll pause this bit in case it shakes the life out of the table when it's doing an embroidery stitch so i'll come back and show you what i choose all right in two, about two seconds right that wasn't too bad actually i could have left you going but um it's got this nice sort of dime um uh, triangle stitch there okay so that's it that's the cover done very colorful very eclectic don't be afraid <laughs> it's all right right let's trim it down and then it always looks less of a dog's dinner so what i might do is just use my scissors i was going to get the uh, um, rulers out but actually my super scissors that i got for christmas oh i love you I say we did leave it an inch bigger so you know if you really need to go in and trim up do so might need to on that edge where it was a bit short these you know if you're a scrap um a junk journaler keep these for your snippets that little bit and that little bit i think the rest of it that's quite a nice little one um yeah i think that can go in the bin It's quite short there, so I'm going to trim that back with the rotary cutter. Let's just trim that. I'm just going to run a stitch line down this end one as well. It just stops them flapping around because when you come to actually um, sew them together, this can flap around quite a bit. So I'm just going to really quickly run a stitch down there. Um, Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> oh, where are you? I need number five, not number seven. Thank you. Six, zigzag, that's all I'm doing. It's just to stop it flapping around and being a pain when we're working on the rest of it. So this bit I need to just trim really quickly. With the rotary cutter because it has gone a little bit. Uh, kind of get it straight. I say we have got a bit of wiggle room on this so don't... Uh, going to do the same down there just to catch that bit in just to stop it um, flopping around right so there we are three million pieces of equipment so there, that's your cover. Okay. If you don't love it, you can always patchwork over it. Okay. You do not have, you know, if you look at it and you just go, that's a complete dog's dinner. I really don't like that. Grab some little pieces like this, or if you've got some hexes cut or something like that and start patchworking. All right. Now, don't forget, we are going to put flowers and things on, um, but... I like it, you know, whatever. So 
you know you could you might want to if you got a scrap of that which we did have a tiny bit didn't we this is the last of this i love this fabric um you know i could put patches on all over the front here if i didn't really really like it you can do the same but as i say it's all about using up our scraps and making something really colorful again if you want it all one colour, you do it all one colour. It's up to you. But I do like the quilted, pieced look and the crazy colours. And, you know, that's me. We'll leave it there for that one. Um, I will come back and do a part two um, where we decorate the front. Because we need to do all our decoration before we start stitching fabrics together. And we'll look at the internal pockets as well. All right, so that'll be on the next bit. So get your scraps, get stitching. Have fun. Just go for it. Or, you know, do all one colour palette. It is your choice. See you on the next one. Bye.